Okay. Just pulled over real quick to get my camera and mic set up for you so I can uh, do a quick quick video on the ride into Old Faithful. I believe it's only like two miles up here somewhere. Um, I have no cell phone service so far in the park, Yellowstone. Um, I can't get anything to load. And uh, also my GPS doesn't work. So I'm going off of the Yellowstone map they gave me on the way in. And there's a lot of traffic already and it's only 10.30. Riding on the CB300F, my little custom scrambler. Carried it all the way from North Carolina on the back of the truck on my uh, hitch carrier, Black Widow hitch carrier, which I want to do a video on that soon too, so you can see that. But so far, it's been amazing. It's worked perfectly. It's traveled the bike 2,400 miles and it has not fallen off yet, so hopefully it makes it the whole way back. But I came into Yellowstone from the east side, from Cody, Wyoming. Uh, it was only 60 miles from Cody to get into the park, bought my passes, and then I had a good an hour, an hour and 20 minute drive to actually get to where I was going to park the truck for the day, which was the West Thumb Geyser Basin. And it was uh, it was perfect. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be. There was lots of room. I showed up. I got there at 20 after 9. And uh, the parking lot was mostly empty. There was like maybe five or six cars there. I found an awesome spot to unload the bike. And it took me, you know, to get the bike unloaded and to get dressed for what I thought I was going to need to wear today, pack everything in the bike that I thought I was going to need for the day. It took me about 40 minutes to get everything uh, buttoned up, packed, ready to go, truck locked down. And I was pulling out of the parking lot at, at couple minutes after 10 a.m. and it was almost full. I'm glad I got an early start. It was filling fast. Weird. I got a feeling as the day goes on it's just gonna get like crazy crazy busy here. This is why I'm on the bike because I can get around traffic if I need to and uh, you know, pretty much park anywhere. I don't have to wait for a spot to open up. Because, I mean, look at all these cars in front of me. Already. It's only 10.30. There's a lot of traffic. So, I, I would venture, I guess, by, you know, 1, 2 in the afternoon, it's just going to be a madhouse here. Because it's 4th of July weekend. I have no idea what to expect here as far as how this is set up. You have to show your pass to get in. I doubt it. Oh, it doesn't. I think there's a chance of rain today. I do have my rain gear with me in case I need that. Um, it was cool. This morning uh, when I left the parking lot um, where the truck is, it was about 55. And I believe it's supposed to get into like the high 70s today. So I have it on a, uh, I got a t-shirt on with a very, very light long sleeve. And then I put my, my armor on. And uh, then I put a light like hoodie type jacket over that and it's like perfect not too hot not too cold yeah look at these things they're like old-timey buses uh, that's the second one I've seen they look like they're from the 40s or something I guess that's the the parks bus system all right old faithful to the right I'm hoping that I luck out and that it'll be having an eruption somewhat close to when I arrive there. I, mean, 
I know they can predict it. Um, so I'm hoping I don't have to sit around and wait for like 90 minutes or something. Because I'd like to keep on moving through the park and cover as much ground as I can before it gets too crazy busy. From where I parked at West Thumb to Old Faith Hole is about 17, 18 miles. So it wasn't bad the road. All right, so there's a lot of parking here. Holy crap. Oh yeah, there's a ton of parking here. There's a ton of people here already, too. I'm just going to go this way, I guess. Getting a spot to stand. <laughs> Shit. It's 10 30 in the morning, it's like four rows deep. Oh, that was perfect timing. I think it's starting to go. timing. There's so many people here. <laughs> it's literally, there's benches right there for people to sit on. So you're like, I was like five rows deep. There's got to be like two or three thousand people here. I literally walked up and waited not even five minutes and interrupted. It was absolutely perfect time. It just reeks of sulfur. This looks cool. Now water. Wow.
now it's boiling. This is just a huge, like, I don't know how many square mile. Oh, that one's going off down there. I'm just getting hit with mist. You see the thing soaked. Dude. <laughs> so wet. Probably not the best thing to breathe in. I think it's really going off. Just blowing the mist everywhere. It's really pumping out. I mean, it keeps going. I've been walking for a long time. I mean, it goes way down there and cut it short. Now it look kind of the same, so. making like a rumble of thunder noise. Just pumping out steam. I feel like this one's been going off for like 20 minutes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Prismatic spring. It's so steamy and windy today. Stopped in uh, Canyon Village. Uh, just a little gift shop and a grill to eat and some bathrooms and bear spray rental. Um, get out here on the open road and then discuss Yellowstone. I've been riding around now for four hours. We did Old Faithful which I was there for like an hour and a half. There's a lot at that spot. A lot of different hot springs and geysers. And, I mean, you could walk around there for probably three hours at least. I 
mean, I only saw like half the stuff there. I was like, I gotta get out of here. I got other stuff to see too. I, uh, I went to Grand, I went to Grand Prismatic Spring, which was cool. Kind of hard to see though, honestly, because it's, you're on ground level with it and it's fucking huge. It's like the size of a pond. So, I mean, luckily I had my GoPro on an extension pole so I could, you know, get up in the air 10 feet or so. Maybe got some good shots of it. I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, that place was hopping. There was so many people at that place. The cars were backed up along the sides of the road at the entrance for like a half mile in each direction, solid, parked with cars. People just trying to walk in the gate. Um, I, <laughs> I just jumped the line. There was, I got, I drove right to the gate and there was a line of cars, like 50 cars in line waiting to get in the parking lot. People waiting on the main road to turn in. I just turned in and I just drove past all the cars. On the left hand side, I just drove past everyone, drove right to the front of the line, went in the parking lot. There was open spaces in the parking lot. I don't know why people were waiting to go in. So I just parked and got out and did my thing and gosh, I was in and out of there. And 20 minutes where the people that were waiting in line probably didn't even get to park by the time I was done in there. That was one of the benefits of having the bike just straight up go around people and park anywhere. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Just go around all these people waiting in line for I don't know what. sure what's happening here why everybody's just standing there waiting I guess they're just waiting for someone to back out of a spot I'm just gonna go through everybody these people are double parked <laughs> this guy's just I don't know what he's doing I'm going around him and we're just gonna go well, that's a no parking there we'll just keep going up here Gonna be anything good in there to see? Um, I might better just park it right here. What can we see? Which, which way do we gotta go? Ooh, oh wow, that's me. Wow. Okay, I've been riding around in Yellowstone about five hours now. 
I mean, you could stop every freaking 20 minutes if you want. Not even, every 10 minutes for an amazing sight. I mean, even right here. It's just the middle of an open field, but yeah, there's nothing here. You can see forever. Nice little lake. Uh, I am so glad I brought the bike. Holy cow. That saved me so much time and energy beating traffic. I can go around everyone and park anywhere. Highly recommend it. Although I would have brought better walking shoes. I'm in my boots and uh, I can feel my feet blistering from walking. You, you got to do a lot of walking here. That's for sure. Every spot you pull off, you got to you know, walk 10 minutes to get to the viewpoint. But yeah, oh my gosh. Poor place. No way you can ever see it all in one day. I just hit some main attractions and uh, you know, did a couple little hikes and gonna start heading on the way back now. Um, I would definitely recommend bringing a bike and just parking somewhere in the morning, going out on the bike all day. It's a lot more fun, it's a lot easier. Those, I think, are probably the mountains that I came through on the way in. I came through a mountain pass, like 8,500 feet high. There was snow on the side of the road still. I could have got out of the truck and made snowballs. I'm not sure what else is on this road to see. I'm headed back towards the truck. I'm actually kind of exhausted. Being out in the fresh air all day, on and off the bike, walking all over the place. Tired, man. We sleep good tonight. I haven't found any uh, good souvenirs for myself yet. Uh, I don't want some chintzy uh, gift shop magnet. Actually, what I want, and I've yet to even see one of them, I want a, a belt buckle. I'm hoping maybe in Lake Jackson there'll be a you know a local type shop that'll have some some jewelry and some belt buckles and stuff. It's one thing I've noticed about the the national park system as I've been through Rushmore and Badlands and and now Yellowstone and all these places they they really try their best to get you in there as cheaply as they can. When I was in South Dakota I happened to be traveling with Ruthie's brother and his wife who are active duty Air Force so we got in free every single place we went just because of that. Once they said we're active duty, they were like, oh, well, forget all the fees, just go right in, go ahead. And then when I got to the gate here, I was asking the guy which pass would be best for me to get. And uh, I ended up you know, going with the multiple pass, the yearly, annual, whatever, which was 80 bucks. And he said, have you been to other parks? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, well, do you, do you save your receipt? And I said, no, because you know, I didn't have one. I got in free at all those places. Uh, he said, well, if you would have saved your receipt, I could have discounted that off of the price of your annual tag. So, keep your receipts if you've been somewhere else. Because if you end up do buying the annual pass, they can knock that money off. West Thumb, 20 miles.